Okay, uh, today start earlier. Welcome all to the Master Leong Show. Good evening, good evening all. So today Master start much earlier. Oh uh, yeah, now it's just seven fifty four. Yeah, so today Master I uh, start early and early lah. Like, anyhow do I don't care. Yeah, self import is like that one. Ah, uh, anyhow suka suka anyhow do can already. Oleg, welcome welcome. Yeah, today big green in the Hong Kong market. Quite nice. So yesterday, ah yeah, yesterday actually ma master was feeling very moody. Yesterday the Hong Kong market down, but it's people who make me moody. Uh. A lot of those random bird bird uh, keep coming and ask me, master, uh, should I sell? Or uh, should I hold? Ah uh, yeah, all the, the, the panic here and there. It, it feels very frustrating. Uh. It's like every time Alibaba is down one or two percent, master uh, have, have to like save them. And then uh, yeah. Then nowadays I'm fed up already. Nowadays, uh, if Alibaba drop one or two percent or even five ten percent, if you ask master, master, uh, should I sell or not? Master will tell you just sell, uh. just sell and get out. Uh. Don't waste my time, uh. Uh, Yeah. So those that sold off Alibaba yesterday, like I shared in my telegram, I saw on our Zoom forum, someone sold all his Alibaba shares to buy Palantir. Chase the AI hype. <laughs> Gone case that the person sell Alibaba at the lows and buy Palantir at 20 times sales uh, when it's up already 200% over the past one year. So a lot of people they give up on the China market and, and they FOMO into AI, they FOMO into crypto. Good luck to them. A master cannot save this kind of person. Uh. This kind of person, uh, to be honest, uh, not, I, I, I curse people. Uh, is they, they have to lose their money or even lose all their money. Then they can wake up their idea. So today Hong Kong market Alibaba up two percent or back to seventy level. So it's still a very strong support lah. Hong Kong seventy, then uh US seventy two. Ping An thirty three dollar because the eight percent dividend yield is too attractive. So today Master will be talking about ICBC. ICBC also super discount to book value, super high dividend yield. So it's a super value buy lah. Uh, uh, the way I I think about ICBC. Let me check what lag or not. Oh, today everything okay. Yeah, was today my, my, my phone I'm not using the mobile data. Both my phone and both my computer I'm using the, the same uh fiber internet. Just that the PC is using the 5 gigahertz. Then the, the mobile I'm using 2.4 gigahertz. I hope that this side you won't short circuit. So I really hate the M1. I've been with M1 for such a long time. Then don't know why now this my M1 the, the 4G for my mobile that there, there's sometimes there's no recession at all. I cannot get internet. I think they, they use too much the VMO uh, virtual mobile operator. They out they let other people use their network. So too many people are using the network. Then the internet becomes uh restrictive. Okay, Jasper Lim, welcome tonight. US publishing GDP and jobless claim and core PCE. Oh, so that's a lot of data. But I think the uh, US is clearly still on the uptrend, so it doesn't change for me. Uh, the one that I'm very concerned is CPI, and I think CPI will be uh, very sticky. Uh, lazy investor, you think that maybe Meituan and, and Tencent movement is good. Uh, May, Meituan results was very good, so so I think the worst is over for, for Meituan. So, and they prove that they are, they are very profitable now. So anything below 3% is just sideways movement. Yeah, nowadays, Hong Kong market is not crashing 5-10% that, that type really. Even drop is drop 1-2%. The national team for, forms a support. So it's drop is also small drop only. Lina Lim, PCE on Friday. Oh, oh so Friday is uh, tomorrow. Lah. Oh yeah, so tomorrow is holiday for I think Singapore and Hong Kong. So the Singapore and Hong Kong market is closed. So tomorrow I might not stream. Yeah, by default I'm not streaming tomorrow. I just take a break. Lah. Because I want to cover Hong Kong market more. So tomorrow, if I cover, it will be US market. Ah, but it's a bit boring for me. I don't care. So master just take the day off. But if there's major news or it's suddenly there's big movement or what, then, then I might stream tomorrow. But by default, tomorrow holiday, master not streaming. Or oh, master take a break. Go and enjoy, go and relax. Oi, oi. Oh, good evening. BTC. Wow, come here, come here. Okay. Jen Philip. Welcome, welcome. Junam. Master feeling better today. Ah. Uh, so so uh, did not sleep well last night uh, uh, neighbors very noisy yeah that's why poor people stay hb hdb is like that one sometimes got noisy neighbor 
It's the small kid lah. What lao e? One a.m. Two a.m. Still running around. Or what ah? It's a three year old kid ah. Already email HDB complain them ah. Don't give chance already. Irritating at one a.m. Two a.m. Or disturb people sleep. No need to sleep one. What lao e? To know how the parents teach one. If want to have kids, better ah discipline your kids well. Otherwise, don't have kids. Otherwise, people master ah suffer. One two a.m. Boom 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 ah those kids run running sound. What lao e? Cannot tahan. So. Uh, Ali Farm purchase Ping An at three two point five five to three three. Can't wait! Wow, it's a good buy. The dividend yield is is so good, it's so good. Or oh, Donkey Genius, ah, Chicken Genius. I wonder if he's still holding Alibaba. I think he's still holding lah, but he never update. He bought Alibaba at six nine point six nine. Cash eleven. Good evening. Or no OT ah? Or don't OT? Boss, tomorrow, uh, Cash eleven is from Hong Kong. So tomorrow holiday, just enjoy your your long weekend. Cash eleven. Now J Lo, ML, you are getting more popular now and more advertising on 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 your channel. Is it? You see more advertisement now. Every thirty minute, you you will see advertisement on my channel. I set as at thirty minute. Before you come in, you see one. Then every thirty minute, you see one uh advertisement. Chong Ko Star, welcome. Other thing, BYD huge drop last night. So, uh, BYD like I shared with the results, the fourth quarter the revenue growth is very strong, but the net profit quarter to quarter came down. This is because of increased competition and the price war. So investors a bit uncomfortable. And, and BYD is actually not cheap. Eh? BYD is actually I think like twenty times, nineteen times earning. Oh, BYD, uh, Yahoo Finance, yeah. Uh, so it's two one, eh, one two one one. Oh, the so so today eighteen times earning. So it come down a bit already, so it's actually not say super cheap. <laughs> so as compared to uh in the Hong Kong market, a lot of stocks are trading at single digit. The Hansen Index is trading at six times earnings. Like today, I'm covering ICBC. It's trading at I think four times earnings only. <laughs> yeah, so so BYD at <laughs> eighteen earnings, eighteen times earnings, it doesn't look cheap. Well, because the whole market in in Hong Kong is so uh the valuation is so low. Oh uh Cliff. Cliff Chu, do you subscribe to notion that cheap will get uh cheaper? Cheap can get cheaper, but but now it's ridiculously cheap already in the Hong Kong market. And a lot of these Hong Kong blue chips that I covering, like the Chong Kong Group ah, property stocks ah, uh, bank stocks ah, insurance company, they are paying like six to eight percent dividend. That's very high already. Is that double the historical dividend? Usually they they pay like three to four percent. Now they are paying six to eight percent dividend. So that creates a flaw in their stock price. Or it is very unlikely we will see blue chips ah trade paying ten percent or more dividend. Eight percent dividend, a lot of people will rush in to buy already. Or tomorrow U.S. market also close ah. All also close ah. Tomorrow is what day? I also don't know what what day tomorrow is. Alvin C, welcome. So tomorrow, master, uh, just enjoy my my long weekend. Ah, if suddenly a master got some idea or what, then maybe I'll stream special. Or G G, you want Thanos special? I don't know what to Thanos. We only hit Thanos a lot on the A K seventy one. Then he make his video. I ah still talking about banks. I go watch his video. Oh, because you all will post his video at at the Telegram group. Then then I will just see. Oh, it become you all are my notification. Then he talk about the Iris. Iris gone case lah. Ah, the German assets. Ah, Germany now is going into recession. The gearing will shoot up. The D P U will come down. It's very bad, so so I I I don't know how low iris can go. It might go as low as fifteen cents or even twenty cents. You all be careful. Yeah, don't buy some pan iris. A L F exactly the children behavior is the best testament of uh parenting. Ah, yeah, how you sure the one a.m. kid is really kid? Ah, yeah, I also don't know. Ah, cannot be adult. Ah, if a adult like that, boom 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 one one a.m. Wah, damn scary. I also don't know. If not kid, then then I I I will be very scared already. Yeah, I uh see how lah. I go talk to them, but then they say it's not them. Always like that one. Always, always master is more sensitive to noise. At night sleep, ah, I'm a light sleeper. Then they say it's not them. I speak to all the neighbor already, so roughly I know who who is the culprit lah. Ah yeah, life is like that lah. Have to move on lah. G G M L can cover Zoom. Zoom I don't like. Zoom. Usually Zoom is like uh the mode is not that strong because 
there's Microsoft Teams, uh, there's there's Google Meet, all this. So, uh, they, their competitive advantage is is not that strong. Also, some U.S. stocks are like like the what Nike la, Hershey's la, all those Adam Cool stock la, that you ask you all ask me to cover Adobe, SD Lauder. I don't cover much. La. I talk about it usually is I tell you why I don't like the stock. If I cover Zoom, I'll tell you why I, I don't like Zoom. Zoom, the problem is that it don't have the, the synergies. Example, you uh, have Microsoft Windows, you will use uh, Microsoft Teams, what? am I right? Because you already paid for the Microsoft uh, 365 subscription, Microsoft Windows, all this. So it comes with Microsoft. Zoom naturally is handicapped already. Zoom boom is during the COVID. Now, now it's uh, slowly dying already. Zoom, you buy, right? You, if you buy Zoom, your only thesis is that it, it, it gets acquired by one of the big tech. If that's not your thesis to make money, you want Zoom to like that grow, get more users, uh, then I think then you, you will make good returns on Zoom. That, that's the way I, I will think of Zoom the business. Uh. Oh, Pui Chong, welcome. Thanos, Mr. Lu. Uh, Mr. Lu, nowadays, he, he not, not talking about stock market, really. He's talking about JB. All about JB, JB, JB. Uh, so master, I, I don't know much about Malaysia and JB. Once in a while, I go JB uh, with my friends for like food, massage, KDV. Wow, KDV normal one, uh, sing song. Uh, my, my, my friends are, are all female. Uh, don't misunderstand. Uh. The all male KDV, that one is very long ago, 10 years ago. Oh, I, I go that one. Uh. Now it's a mix, mix, mix gender KDV. Uh. It's very affordable, yeah. But but quite some time never go really. The, the, the JB, I think, uh, last year, last year I went. This year I, I haven't go JB at all. Alvin C Fortune Read got discount. So one thing yeah, today in the Telegram group, people ask me oh Fortune Read ah, uh, and the Link Read ah. Uh. So what I like about Link Read right is that it doesn't have a sponsor. Or uh, uh, the bigger shareholder is BlackRock uh, ETF uh, uh, Bigger shareholder is ETF. So it doesn't have a sponsor. So recently, like last year, they did the rest issue so that uh, they can gear down. So their they gearing ratio dropped to 18%. So now they can seize the opportunity to buy assets at a discount. They're not forced, for example, to save their sponsor. So whereas like Fortune Read, uh, the, the sponsor is the CK asset, uh, Chong Kong Group. So be it at any reads, uh, or so uh, the problem with most reads is that Sometimes their sponsor have 20 to 30% stake in the read. And in the downturn, the sponsor is in trouble. And they need to gear down. And to gear down what they do, they sell their assets to raise cash. And in such a desperate time when they sell their asset, they, they will sell to their read. <laughs> and they will sell to the read at a markup price, at an over price. Yeah, so uh, you at this time, downturn, you don't want to own reads that have a shady sponsor. As example, first reads are... Uh, Lipo more reads are uh, OUE reads is all this right. What, what happened in the past is the is the sponsor dump a lot of assets at an over price or, or overvalued price to the subsidiary the read. Uh, they use the master lease all this to, to hide uh, the weakness la. But once the master lease expires ten years later, you see the rental crashing. Yeah, so so fortune reads you see is a heavier discount. The U is higher because the sponsor is CK Group. Uh, the 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 the, the uh, worry that Chong Kong Group might dump assets, uh, to to Fortune Read, or uh, but but, uh, so the risk reward is different. So so I still prefer Link Reads ah. Link Reads more diversified, uh, lower risk, but the yield is lower at seven point five percent. But seven point five percent to me that's very high yield already. I won't be great, greedy ah, to to chase nine percent yield, uh, because Fortune Reads is more of a pure play. Oh, but you really have five Tiger General Reads, or you already have CFA. You want to diversify, take more risk, get a bit of higher yield, then you, you buy a bit of the uh, fortune read. Or TL Cha, I would like to join the Telegram group. Can you just go to the community page, but you have to have the Baba Bird status. Either you sign up as Baba Bird, or you get the lucky draw, the Baba Bird, then you go to the community tab, then you can join our Telegram group to chit chat with us. Or all is welcome, all, all like. Uh, same minded, like minded people is welcome. Rocket Rabbit, welcome, welcome. Okay, so later then check with you all. So, so uh, let me begin. Let me check whether got lag or not. Okay, internet, very good. Also, 808 already. Master talk hot a lot already. Talk hot for like 15 minutes. Uh, so, yeah. So, 
China property crisis is ripping through its biggest bank. Oh, so Bloomberg ah is also named Doomberg. So this Doomberg the picture right really got this uh, first character called Doomberg ah. He runs a Substack ah, uh, that that writes article. So he share all those his own view lah on the macro environment, all the charts, all this. So ah uh, nowadays Bloomberg the headlines is all very scary. That's why the Hong Kong market ah uh, the, the 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 is so weak, and is a three year bear market going into a four year bear market. So the headline news is always ah、uh, very negative, and you look at the Hong Kong market, be it like tech lah, be it banks ah, insurance companies, or even REITs. A lot of them are are now like super low valuation, like single digit PE, six to eight percent dividend yield, more than half price discount to book. So the question today we want to answer is China banks can still buy or not? Yeah. So uh, the, the let me read the report by Bloomberg first. Or、oh, Bloomberg say, oh, Bank of Communication, this is the sixth biggest China bank, or、oh, reported that its property bad loan ratio jumped almost five percent, or at the end of last year from two point. Uh, eight percent. Oh, a jump to five percent, from two point eight percent. So, what does it mean by property bad loan? <laughs> Means previously it lend loan to all these property developers, and five percent of them have defaulted and choose not to make payment. So, so that's quite bad. So that's quite bad. So ICBC saw its bad loans from residential mortgage. Means the common folks ah, or buy a house, then they take a loan. So this. Uh, bad loans rose nine point six percent to twenty seven point eight billion yuan. So this looks like a very scary number, five percent, nine point six percent. So we will dig further, or、uh, for ICBC to to see if it's true or not. So the ICBC right, uh, the commentary is that non performing loans decreased by zero point seven seven, or from the beginning of the year with sufficient provision provided. Provision means they set aside funds ah.、Uh, For for to uh match against the bad bad loans to tank the bad loans, also、uh, at the end of two zero two three year the balance of real estate loan and mortgage at ICBC was more than seven trillion yuan, accounting for more than a quarter of their loan book. So now these people are very worried of banks having having property exposure. That's why banks are being sold down so aggressively. Then you see Western media they say oh banks exploding, China banks going bankrupt. So it's very difficult to pick banks. You must really know what is their property exposure, ah,、uh, what is the risk, or、uh, what is their debt portfolio. So so today we will investigate further. So for the Bloomberg, you see ah、uh, this chart right, or you see this one that is rising is actually the non-performing loans. That means loans that have gone bad, and they say that wow now is ah、uh, reaching a record high. So this loan right, well, these bad loans will only go higher. Or it it won't come down one. Why? Because as the economy grows, right? Or that there's more property, and there's more consumers. There's more people taking housing loan.、Uh, as the GDP grows bigger, right? Or bad loans are is always a proportion or to your your entire uh G GDP. Be your GDP in property, which is twenty percent of the GDP. Yeah. So in the long run, right? This going up, right? Or、uh, is not something to say to freak out. I say, wow. The bad loans more and more over the past decade. Oh, there's so much、uh, bad loan. It is relative. It's like of the total amount of loan, how many percentage of it is going bad? So that is the big question that we have to answer. Then the second thing, uh, you can see here the net interest margin. So this zig zag zig zag, uh, uh, thing all、oh, is coming down from uh two point six percent level. Now it's coming down to one point eight percent. So for banks, right? Basically, their business model is they borrow money from the depositors. Depositor put money, they pay them one or two percent interest. They take the money and they lend it out, or be car loan, housing loan, property loan, uh, corporate loan. Then they lend it at a higher rate, or of say four percent or five percent. And the difference is the net interest margin, because the China Central Bank has been cutting rates, or over uh the past few years, especially uh post COVID and during the lockdown period. So the net interest margin keeps contracting, and this hurts the profitability of banks. So today the bank we want to look at is ICBC. So ICBC, right? I think is is the biggest indicator of whether Chinese banks can make it or cannot make it. So 
Usually you will hear uh, people talk about the big four banks. So when the central bank, when CCP makes a policy, usually it wants the big four or the big six banks to cooperate. As example, we have the white list of the 50 largest developer. So most of them, they, they get the loan is from the big four and the big six banks. Yeah, so for me, right, if you want to pick individual banks, right, it's very difficult. You must really go through the entire report. To, to, to see whether it's safe or not, can buy or not. So they just announced their full year results. So today, Master, the afternoon, I spent about three hours uh, going through their 300 page report to summarize to you all. Yeah, so you see very few people doing this one. Uh, people do this usually is their full time job as an analyst. For me, I, I, I like to do this kind of an, an, an analysis to see whether the company is undervalued and to learn about the industry. So uh, the biggest bank track, right, usually they rank them by the total asset uh, in their balance sheet, yeah, how much deposits, how, how much loans they are making, and that determines their size and not their market cap. Uh, because their market cap is actually very uh, depressed now. So ICBC, this is their five year track record. You see that over the past five years, right, net interest income or uh, is the equivalent of revenues uh, for, for the banks. Or is, uh, at about uh, 655 uh, billion. So uh, the, the thing you, you, you see that uh, over the past five years, actually not much growth because it's so huge already. And, and the net interest margin uh, is uh, very fetish. And later I'll explain why, 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 why it's fetish. It has to do with the net interest margin also. Then profitability, uh, uh, that although there's a bit of growth over the past five years, but you see the past three years, net profit, basically is also flat so actually there there is not much growth uh, for the largest bank so what what is the problem uh, with icbc so today in the hong kong market uh, it, it's slightly down as you see the news headline is very bad but a percentage wise look actually revenues down a bit down i think two three percent then earnings uh was up uh, was basically flat uh, or up one percent so i would say overall this result is considered to me as very good already. We, we saw like insurance player like that Ping An, uh, earnings drop 20%. China Life, earnings drop 30% because of their investment portfolio, having exposure to the property market and they took a one-time write down. So for ICBC, I actually feel that this result is very good. Uh, they maintain uh, almost their revenues and earnings at the same level. So one thing you notice is that like I share with you, they are the biggest bank as of 2022 because they have 39 trillion worth of asset. And this year, the total asset grew by another 10% to 44 trillion. Also, that is super huge. Huh? Oh, the, the Chinese banks are actually way bigger than, than the US banks oh, in, in, in that terms. Oh, uh, they are actually bigger than, than the, even than the US banks in terms of uh, assets. So one thing is because China and US, right, they operate differently. US, they operate more on the baser tree. So their leverage is less, about six times like that. Six to eight times, uh, uh, depending whether you're blue chip bank or, or, or mid cap bank. Then uh, US banks, they also do more on uh, non-interest uh, income, like uh, stock brokeraging, uh, then uh, credit card, fund management, all this. So, so on a market cap basis, the US uh, banks, they look uh, bigger or because they have the non-interest uh, uh, income business and also their valuations are higher. But if thinking about a set basis, right, China banks are actually very huge. 44 trillion is super, super huge. Because the Chinese banks, right, their leverage you can see here, equity of the shareholder is only 3.7, almost uh, 4 trillion. So that against equity they are child times the equity but we must do the net capital basis it's, it's more fair of course there's that tier one capital which is your shareholder capital but you can also add in like preferred shares all this which is also long-term capital or that, that helps you to buffer against uh, any of those non-performing loans uh, all those losses it's actually your equity but it's like a long-term uh, 1000 year bond that, that is non non-callable so that, that's preference share. So that goes into your uh, net capital basis, which you can leverage on. 
So you will notice that a lot of these Chinese banks they're actually nine or even ten times leverage. So that's very scary, right? Huh? But actually banks are all like that one. People who, who are new to banks, they, they are scared about uh all all this uh, leverage. Or in post when you buy REITs, right? Then you see oh REITs is just forty percent leverage. But banks is one thousand times uh, one thousand percent leverage or ten times leverage. Or on the percentage rise, uh it looks very scary. But that's the business model of bank. You put a very thin sliver of your capital. Then with that capital you can leverage up to take depositor money. Then like I say you, you borrow at one, two percent, you lend out at four percent, you earn the difference. So the assumption is that the bank, right, or they have a very diversified or uh, portfolio of lending. They should not lose a huge amount of money. Example, if you are 10 times leverage, right? If you have 10% of your loan go go back, uh 10% of your loan uncollectable, you go bankrupt already. 10% non-performing loan, you go bankrupt. And this happened during the global financial crisis, the subprime crisis, and this happened for the US banks. And back then, the, the global financial crisis, the US banks, they were 20 times or even 30 times leverage. But post GFC, because of the Basel tree, now the US big banks, they, they are less leverage. Uh, they are only like 6 or 8 times uh, leverage. And they try to make more money from non-interest uh, income. But for the Chinese big banks, they are mostly focused on, on the interest income. The non-interest income, like brokerage firm, you will see those listed bro brokerage arms. Uh, and they will see those listed uh, asset managers like China, we have the big four asset managers. So one thing you notice is that although the asset, right, <laughs> total asset base ha has gone up from 30 trillion to 44 trillion. So much asset, but your earnings never go up. Why? Because your net interest margin has been coming down from 2.3% that you borrow and, and lend. In the past, you can lend at a higher rate. But now because you're lending at a lower rate, so your, your margins are lower at 1.6%. So the net asset value per share actually continued to increase over the past five years for about $7 to now $9.50. So fundamentally, there is nothing wrong with this. It's, banks are a bit cyclical, a bit cyclical. Or because they follow the movement of interest rate. They follow the movement of the U curve. So for China banks, right? Now they are right at the bottom already of their net interest margin. So th there might be two more cuts this year. La. So net interest margin might even go to 1.5%. But that will be the bottom already. So once the economy starts to recover, once China starts to raise rate, net interest margin will increase and profitability will increase. But in the Western world, like in US or even in Singapore banks, the net interest margin has peaked. Some the net interest margin like 2.5%. So they already peaked already. So when the Fed start to cut rate, their net interest margin will come down. So I don't recommend buying like Singapore banks because if you think about it, their, their net interest margin is at the peak already. There is downside to come. Whereas for China banks, there is upside to come in terms of their net interest margin. Then next is the non-performing loan. Why is non-performing loan? It means money that you cannot get back. That means the, the loan sour already. Maybe it's, example, you lend money to China Evergrande. And China Evergrande don't pay you. So that loan becomes non-performing, gone case already. So the thing, of course, the bank, right? When you get all the depositor money, you don't lend to one person. If you lend to only one person, huh? Hu Kai Yan, huh? at China Evergrande, huh? then you take all the money, run away, you, you gone case already. So usually, I say you lend to 100 uh, different companies and all is the same amount. So you expect that on average, right, of 100 companies, maybe one or two companies will go bad. So for generally for banks, right, the non-performing loans fluctuates between one to three percent. One to three percent. Yeah. Three percent, right, is usually banks, right, that do more lending towards SME, small media enterprise, they have a higher failure rate. But if you lend more towards like blue chip companies, then your NPL is more towards one percent. Or and depend whether it's good times or, or bad times. So you notice that the NPL has been maintained very steadily at about 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. So the uh, what I would think is that they should be very diversified before I dig into the details. And because they are the largest bank bank in China, am I right? So they're, they're lending to so many corporations, so many common folks. So their portfolio should be very diversified and it should reflect what is happening in the China economy. So later, we will dig deeper to see the details uh, of their loan book. So. 
the their loan right you can see here right about 14 trillion is in corporate loans or it means to companies or big small medium or large company but more towards large companies because 14 trillion they have so much money to lend if they only lend to sme right then they cannot lend finish the money so they lend mostly to blue chip companies listed companies and they also have a personal loan which means like uh, people that want to buy an apartment or what so that's also huge that's about 8 trillion 8 trillion oh so 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 that's a lot so the average yield that, that they're lending right at for the copper loan is about 3.57 this is down from last year 3.8 percent so they're lending at a lower rate that's why their net interest margin compressed personal loan, loan also the same from 4.69 is now 4.23 so actually now right as they keep lowering the risk it's getting more and more attractive to take a loan to, to buy a house or to take a loan to expand the, the, the business but now people are not aggressively taking up a loan because they feel that the economy is, is recovering but not quickly it's a slow recovery so the, the pace of the loan is very slow that's why the central bank the ccp asked them to lend more aggressively lend faster to, to stimulate the economy so in their loan book right you will see that uh, the majority of their corporate loans is uh, short term uh, is, is medium term or 12 trillion uh, is or about 50% uh, of their loan is medium to long term corporate loans or whereas 14% is uh, short term so, but the biggest portion is still the corp corporate loans are 50% uh, medium term long term the second uh, biggest portion is actually residential mortgages so this is directly into the housing industry already then as uh, an analyst, analyst right or, or, or you put your analyst thinking cap you the big, first question is how much is their total property exposure because property is the one that we are most worried uh, so we, we dig deeper we see that uh, okay uh okay so we look at the non performing loans are uh, among uh their, their corporate and the personal loan so you can see that short term corporate loans are actually doing very bad or uh, it's quite high it because the average is 1.36 the NPL is 1.36 but a huge portion comes from short term corporate loans last year was even worse 3.14 this year 2.48 so this is where we want to investigate further then uh, for residential mortgage actually doing very well so the common folks right they are still having their job and they are still able to pay their mortgages also basically they buy a house every month they make uh, um, money payment and right so people are not defaulting on their housing loan people that already bought a house they are still paying their housing loan and, and they, are, they are still having the job so when you see western media ah oh, yeah the unemployment is very high it's not true that uh, the unemployment generally is five percent five point five percent but most of the unemployment is actually in the youth or because they want to be influencer <laughs> they don't want to get a low wage job of three thousand or, or four thousand or five thousand or they want to strike it big but but these people usually they, they are so young they don't buy a house people that are in their 30s or above that already own a house they're actually still paying their 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 mortgages people are not defaulting on their mortgages this NPL is very low so you know that they are, they are, the uh, common folks are actually doing quite well the problem is in the corporate loans so wh where are they lending to so this uh, table right or is, is their, the non-performing uh, corporate loans and you see that I highlight in red real estate real estate is the one that, that freaks everybody out so real estate you can see here right last year was very bad six six percent non-performing loan this year actually things improve or oh, it's actually 5.37 so when you see the 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 boom uh the headline uh, what nine percent increase where it got increased the increase is actually this one the residential mortgage actually increased by almost nine or ten percent why it increased from 0 0.39 to 0 0.44 so it increased a uh, five five basis point and against that there's like a 10 percent increase am i right about 0 0.4 0 0.0 0.04 increase am i right so that's about a 10 percent increase oh so boom bird or oh, spread field said wow residential mortgage 10 percent increase in default 
but the net non-performing loan is 0.44 so don't be freaked out by the news headline always do your freaking fucking due diligence that's why people who don't research they only watch youtube see the mainstream news they will be scared out they say wow china bank's gone case going to export default rate skyrocketing wow property market uh, will make all these china banks go bankrupt look at the numbers it's it's totally a different story people are not defaulting on their mortgage loans or the unemployment you see wow uh, western media china everyone is unemployed everybody become delivery rider uh, so this uh, listen less to western media do you yourself read the annual report and do your due diligence if you are lazy to read the annual report then master is here my job is to give you the truth give you the real numbers so residential right here right it actually uh from 6.14 it dropped to 5.37 so so real estate is actually improving why because the real estate bubble right the property bubble they actually had the three rate lines in 2019 they manually pop it but most of the bankruptcy happened during the lockdown period in 21 and 22 so most of these banks right they already do the provision the write down over the past two and three years right in 2021 and 22 they spread out their non-performing loan already and this year that's why it's less like china everyone we've been hearing that the news for two or even three years so long ago they already write, write down these losses that they assume that they cannot come back collect back the money from uh china evergrande already that's why the npl is actually not exploding but but uh, certain areas that you see construction is is increasing like, from two to three so this might be a uh, concern so uh, one thing I, I noticed that is a positive is manufacturing is improving last year was three percent we saw uh in two two export import was very weak in two two three the export uh, was weak but less weak then this year export uh, started to recover already started to turn around so this one the, the numbers should improve so it's a good sign that we see that manufacturing is turning around less factories are going bankrupt but that being said to be honest i don't want to be biased real estate lah you ask me five percent is it a good number it's not a good number i still freaking bad lah. five percent of your loans are, are are not collected being collected that's that's very bad but the good thing is we are diversified among so many industries that's why overall the portfolio only 1.77 so it's manageable because of diversification so uh, one thing that we want to study is also the geographics or which area they are lending to but master is not an expert lah. like Yangzhen river delta i don't know even i don't i don't know where is this i only go to beijing shanghai or uh, these two cities before so i, I that's considered i think i also don't know i also don't know which area so central west northern i also don't know but uh, given this table what i can assume is that uh, they, they are very diversified uh, among the geographic areas uh, and percentage wise it's also quite well spread out i don't see any abnormality uh, of certain region the mpl is, is a very huge number so that i feel okay so lastly right uh people will say master uh, all these numbers can be fake one uh. suddenly they go bankrupt how okay so go bankrupt then go bankrupt or what to do so in the end uh, when you buy a bank right you must ask who well, bank is a bit different when you buy when you buy mcdonald and you buy bank is, is different when you buy mcdonald right you don't really care who is the is the is the largest shareholder whether it's the founder or is it hedge fund because mcdonald is mcdonald you know what is the food how they make money and every year they will open another few hundred outlets or McDonald's, you don't think it will go bankrupt at all. <laughs> it's because it's such a simple business and, and it's not leveraged. But banks is highly leveraged. And in the history, right, every 10, 20 years, there's always news of bank crisis. There's always news of banks going bankrupt. Even in the US, we saw about five regional banks going bankrupt. So banks can go bankrupt. And if a bank go bankrupt, right, you must be very concerned who is the major shareholder. Or if the major shareholder is Master Leong, you think CCP will say the answer is no. Huh? If the major shareholder is ETF, like, like BlackRock holding, you think the government will save? No, uh, they just let you fail. Am I right? Like China Evergrande, uh, did they build up? No, the China Evergrande, who are the investors? It is the institutional investors, it's the hedge funds, it's the retail investors. So uh, 
China Evergrande bondholders wipe out, shareholders wipe out. But for the China, the big four banks and the big six banks, all their major shareholder is the government. Like you see here, or Central Huting Investment, or which is their uh, biggest state-owned uh, investment fund, uh, owns 34% of their uh, A shares. A shares means shares in the China market, like Shenzhen, Shanghai market. Their H share is the Hong Kong market. Then their A shares, another 31% is owned by the Ministry of Finance. Because the big four, big six banks, they are too big to fail. If they fail, right, wow, then it will have short wave throughout the, the, the entire economy. It have a systemic risk. So the Ministry of Finance, they will never let the ICBC fail one. So what happened is during the global financial crisis, what happened is that they have a lot of bad loans. The NPL went to as high as 3 to 5%, 3 to 5% during the debt crisis. So like I tell you, 10% means you are wiped out already. 3 to 5% means you are half dead already. Am I right? Your NPL, if your NPL is 3 to 5%, you are almost half dead. So what they did during the previous crisis is that they set up the big four asset managers. I forget their name. The biggest one is called Hua Rong. So what these uh, asset managers do right, is that they buy out all these toxic assets from the big four Chinese banks to cleanse them, to cleanse them out. Yeah, so that is, so indirectly the government is pumping money. Because they pump money into the four asset managers, then the four asset managers use the money to buy out the toxic asset, to cl cleanse the big four banks. So what it means, right, if you don't understand what I say so far, is a put option. Means if the bank fail, or you exercise the put option, the Ministry of Finance will come in, use money to cleanse your balance sheet and save you. Also, there's a free put option because it is the major shareholder. Okay, so you don't think in China terms, you think in Singapore terms. Because 60% of my viewer is from Singapore. So in Singapore, the bullshit companies, you have DBS, you have SIA, you have Singtel. Can you imagine DBS, SIA or Singtel, any of them go bankrupt and like 50,000, 100,000 people lose their job? The answer is it can never happen. Because if example like SIA, if it had went bankrupt during COVID or it will be a political disaster, so many people lose their job. So what the government did, they actually paid the salary on behalf of the SIA or to the workers and they did rush issue at $3 to pump up SIA and save SIA. And now SIA is $6 or higher. The stock price doubled already. So in a crisis, right, be it SIA, Singtel, or DBS, right, the government will step in. They can do right issue. They can pump money. They have, have uh, other incentives uh, or to, to feed money in, to save the company. So I don't think ICBC will, will go bankrupt. Or then is their numbers real, real or not? I don't have the answer. <laughs> what the numbers they show us, presented to us, gives us a clue or on how the business is being managed. But another sign that I believe the numbers is real is who are their other shareholders in the Hong Kong market. So for their H shares, which are the ICBC shares listed in the Hong Kong market, Ping An holds 14% stake of their H shares. And the Masek Holdings, oh, wow, oh, 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 good, 7% oh, of the Hong Kong shares. So they are actually major shareholders. Also, so uh, so don't don't expose me, don't report me. Uh. So we all know that our CPF money, they pay you the four percent is a loan uh, uh, from from them. Then they take the money, they invest your your CPF in. So usually your, your money right wanted is invest in China, wanted is in US, Europe, wanted is in uh, Asia, even uh, Singapore. So people say that wow, China uninvestable will go bankrupt, but but one third of your CPF money is actually invested in, in China and they invested in blue chip companies like, like ICBC and they are the long-term shareholder collecting a uh, dividend. Then Ping An Asset Management, like I shared with you all, they, they have three arms. They have the insurance arm, they have the banking arm, they have the asset management arm. And asset management arm, a lot of these funds, they themselves, they own a stake uh, in these asset managers. So Ping An, they, also, they are the biggest shareholder of HSBC. They hold an 8% stake. So they are also the bigger shareholder in the Hong Kong shares for uh, ICBC. So uh, Ping An Insurance is also very huge. They manage 12 trillion uh, in, in asset. So for, for me, right, why I like Ping An over ICBC? So Ping An, the difference is that right, 
ICBC, right, they borrow the invest the depositor money, they invest in debt or like mortgage loan, uh, corporate loan. Ping An, they borrow the money is through premiums. For example, you buy a investment link policy or you buy a, a life policy. So within the next 50 years, if you buy buy, then you exercise the, the contract, they pay you $1 million. So for the next 10, 20, 30 years, they keep your money and they invest it for long term. And they invest in bonds and they invest in equity. Yeah, so for me, right, Ping An Management, they invest, right, they have this very transparent portfolio that I know that 80% is in bonds, then 20% is in equity and uh, in uh, property. Yeah, and, and Ping An, in case you all don't know, the property exposure is less than 5% of their portfolio. So I know that my money is, is very safe. I, it, it, it's very safe, yeah. So banks and insurance company is a bit different. It's a bit different, yeah. One invest or by lending money, another invest through a portfolio. So the the last thing is that what I know is real is dividends. Because in the end, dividends goes into my pocket, and the dividend can be used to go and eat Ting Tai Fung and go and eat the Hai Di Lao. Yeah. So for for them, right, you can see that they have a track record of maintaining or increasing dividend. Same for Ping An, same for ICBC. So the dividend is per 10 share la, or in, in the Chinese market. So per share is 0 0.306 uh, six cents. La. Also, uh, I already converted for you all. So one uh, RMB is 1.1 Hong Kong dollar. So uh, their price to book value is 0 0.37 times. So they're trading at a 60% discount to book value. And their dividend yield is 8.5%. So that is very high. So you'll notice that the big four banks, the big six banks, most of them they trade at about uh, 6 to 10% uh, dividend yield. I ever look at the others, what are their latest number? Uh. So uh, today I cover I ICBC first, then I see what's the response. If the view is good, the interest is high, I'm, I might cover the other three big of the, the big four banks. Uh. Like uh, BOC, CCB, <laughs> and also ABC. Uh, so I might cover the other big three banks or even the other uh, big five banks. Yeah, I see how. So ICBC is the one that, that I, I want to spend time to cover because it's the largest and, and, and it has the highest uh, asset you know, of 44 trillion or the biggest asset base. Yeah, so in my view, master ah, can buy or not. My answer is. Uh, I don't recommend buying ICBC uh, because when you pick individual banks, right, there's so much unknowns. Although I shared with you all so much data, I still have a lot of question mark. Do they have exposure to China Evergrande, Country Garden, or, 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 or Wang Ke, Van Key? So I, I don't know. It's, it's a bit uh, uncertainty. Can it be suddenly another property developer go bankrupt, then their NPL uh, increase sharply and their book value get hurt? Yeah, so, so that's a big question mark. So, Usually for banks, right, I don't like to buy banks individually. I like to diversify, or especially for Chinese banks, because they're unknown with their uh, debt portfolio, their loan uh, portfolio. So if you want to buy banks, right, you have to spread it out. As example, you have 100,000, you put 25,000 Hong Kong dollar each into the big four banks. Or if you have more money, you have 120,000 Hong Kong dollar, you put 20,000 each into the big six bank, equally weighted. Then overall, you, 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 are, you are getting about 50-60% discount to book value and you can get at least an 8% dividend yield. And that's very attractive. So if you buy as a basket, right, I think you will do well. You will make money. You get dividend and the dividend is, is uh, increasing. And when the economy uh, turns up or then uh, net interest margin will go up, earnings will go up, then the price to book, uh, the the discount will narrow down, then you get capital gains. Yeah, so 8% uh, dividend you pass a potential capital gain. So that's very attractive. So in the China market, banks are undervalued, <laughs> insurance are undervalued, uh, REITs undervalued, property undervalued, then uh, tech companies also undervalued. So there's so many bargains. That's why this year I'm focusing more on the Hong Kong market. I think Hong Kong has oh, so, so much to buy. So for my DCA, I'm focusing more on Ling REITs and Ping An insurance. So at the end of the day, it depends on your conviction. So I've done, I, I did, previously I did a two hour deep dive on, on Ping An and that goes to show how much I know about Ping An and that's why I have my conviction. I know that Ping An will not go bankrupt. 
And I think I'm the largest shareholder uh, is the government. They hold a 30% stake. And the second biggest uh, stakeholder is the Thai billion, uh, billionaire, CP under the CP group. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce uh, the, uh, the, the Thai billionaire holds a 12% stake uh, in, in, in Ping An. Yeah, so, so I, I feel that Ping, Ping An to me is, is safer and it's very diversified. It's not only just the banking business, got insurance, got banking, got asset management, got tech business. So it has four businesses, it's like a conglomerate. So it's, it, Ping An itself is very diversified. That's why I dare to pick uh, Ping An individually. ICBC, I don't dare to, to pick it individually. If I buy into ICBC, I'll buy uh, the, the, the big four or the big six banks uh, uh, and spread it out evenly. That, that will be my strategy. La. Yeah, so that's all my sharing for tonight. I hope you all uh, uh, have learned more about the Hong Kong market, more about these Chinese banks. La. Also, if you enjoy my sharing, feel free to give Master a like. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so uh, this year I will cover mo more about the Hong Kong market. La. But I'll start from those that are within the Hang Seng Index, the, the, the blue chip stocks. Like, like I, I've talked about uh, Ping An, I've talked about the Ling Reeds, or, or I've talked about the Chong Kong Group. Or I've talked about uh, what uh, yeah so, uh, HSBC. I uh, also talk about uh, also all oh, is blue chip yeah. Start from the blue chip uh. So for for me, I'm also so called new uh, new to the Hong Kong market. Uh, in the past, I spent more time in the Singapore and the U.S. market. But uh, this year, I really want to focus on the Hong Kong market. Because the Hong Kong market is way 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 too undervalued. So you can easily find blue chip companies with six or eight percent dividend yield super discount to book value so you if you even you don't know how to invest uh, you close eye uh, anyhow buy also hard uh. no i'm uh, not saying that you buy the index if you don't know how to stop pick in the hong kong market uh, you can start from the index hansing index or six times earnings four four percent dividend you or the hansing tech uh, etf 3067 then uh hansing index is 2800 and nowadays all the discount broker uh, like the like the tiger mumu we all can assess the Hong Kong market. So, so th there's no reason uh, why you want to ignore the Hong Kong market. Hong Kong market is uh, really opportunities. You might say that, oh, China is uninvestable, but the Masek, GIC, they are, they are investing in all these uh, China companies. Like, like GIC, they, they, they actually bought more shares of Baba and, and JD. Yeah, so you, your CPF money is also inside all these Chinese companies, uh, am I right? Yeah. So yeah, that's all my sharing. Yeah. So uh, chit chat with you all, answer some question that then I call it a night. So tomorrow master not streaming. Uh, tomorrow rest. Uh, maybe maybe I rest unless there's major news or or, or what. Uh, okay. Okay. Ka Hin Ong, Mr. Lu bought a house in JB. Now always trying to imply that JB very safe and air very fresh. So it's a biasness. Uh. For us, even myself, uh, Master, I'm biased on my Alibaba and my China market. I see as opportunity or because I'm invested in the Hong Kong market. So Mr. Lu is vested in JB. So now his views are very bullish on the JB. I think a lot of people will follow Mr. Lu to, to buy into JB. I, I wish them uh, all the best. There's a lot of trap. Uh. There's a lot of trap. Uh, one year later, you'll see Mr. Lu make a lot of oh no video. Oh no, I cannot scam my contractor for Reno. Oh no, my house cannot break in. Oh no, I can I cannot rob. <laughs> I don't know. I just kidding like. Oh, I, I hope that bad things don't happen to him lah. But but the odds is that uh, JB usually think things will happen uh, That the safety is definitely lower as compared to uh, Singapore. Yeah. So I wish him good luck. Yeah. Yeah. So T TL chat. Yeah. You you sign up as Baba Bird already uh. Congrats. Congrats. Yeah. You, after you get Baba Bird, you must click the community tab. Oh, yeah, you go to the community tab. Oh. Yeah, so, so if you don't know, then you click click the, the, the link. Nah, the, there's a the link. Nah. So like, you, like, that now it's the, it's the live stream. Oh, I don't want to click this live stream. Wait, the thing go here. Hey, so, so any of the video you see, there's a link. Nah. One link is to sign up the Baba Bird. Uh, one is the community tab. Yeah, so after you, you, you get the Baba Bird already, then... You go to this community tab, then you can see uh, members only. Then you just click the link, you can join our Telegram group. Oh, so welcome to our Telegram group. What la, what la? Yeah, what? Oh yeah, wow, I see so many shining, shining thing. Wow, rough. Thank you, thank you. Good Friday, good Friday. Good Friday to all. Yeah, so let me read out. 
Or oh, Alvin C, thank you for your Cai Peng. What a, what a special deal for Meituan. Or oh, oh, yeah, Meituan recently doing quite well. The, the results very good. Congrats, congrats. Kahin Ong, thank you, thank you, thank you for your Cai Peng. What a, Ralph, uh, happy good Friday. Wow, thanks for your mala. Wow, Master happy, Jin happy, Jin happy. <laughs> very good day for, for Master. Yeah, okay. So I see got what question. ICBC, IC, boy, C. I want to die, cannot die. IC, boy, C. Wow, Pixels, Pixels. A lot of humor. Very good, very good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, once you sign up as Baba Bird, there will be a small bird beside you. Yeah, so you better double check. Yeah. So, yeah. Perks, uh, I don't know. Sign up Baba Bird need to pay money one, eh? not free one. Eh? How do I pay? I don't know. Uh. Yeah, this one is technical issue. Uh. I also don't know how to advise you. Uh. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Alvin Pay. Uh, ML, have question, Baba. If Baba invested in his subsidiaries, how can he benefit if Baba shareholder if the subsidiary doing well? The subsidiary will earn money, ma. then the money, the earnings flow into the parent company, no? Am, am I right? Yeah, so the profits flow, flow. so uh, invest in a subsidiary. I also don't know how to answer this question. Example, the, 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 we took a 100% stake in Cai Niao Ma, which Cai Niao continues to grow, the revenues double, then uh, the revenues feed into the Alibaba group. Then if they turn profitable, then the earnings and the cash flow uh, feed into the Alibaba group. It's like an investment like that. Lor. So Alibaba, they have stakes in, in, in so, so many investments. Yeah, TL Cha, you slowly la, you slowly try to overcome the technical difficulty la. I also don't know how to help you uh, because it's very simple. <laughs> Sign up Baba Bird, then you go to the community tab, you, you can see the link already. Yeah, see. So I also don't know how, how to help you from the technical point of view. Yeah. Uh, so okay. Wow, got, got Thai name man. Eh. Hello, hello. Sawadi Cup. Sawadi Cup. Wow, got viewer from, from, from Thailand, but I don't know how to read your name. So I call you Sawadi Cup. <laughs> oh, Kapkum Cup. I call you Kapkum Cup. Oh, Kapkum Cup. Welcome, Kapkum Cup. I must have to know how to read your, your, your Thai name. Okay. Midnight. Daniel Earn. Fat last year say no cut. People believe will cut. Fat say this year cut. Everybody ask how to cut. I still believe two, two or three cut. Uh, more towards three cut. Uh, they, because if they don't cut, I think that the market will crash. And because it's election year, uh, Biden cannot afford to let the stock market crash. Yeah. Kahin uh, Ong, I also don't know how to join the Telegram group. Pai said to ask even. Also, uh, you must download Telegram uh, into your handphone. Then, then you go to your handphone, then you click the link, then it will link you to the Telegram. I also don't know uh, how, how, to, how to do that. Uh. Yeah, you go to the community tab, we we'll have the link. Uh. I also don't know. This one, Master is also Lao Uncle. Lao Sir is also Lao Uncle. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I, I see. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Kahi Ong. Wow. Okay. Lazy investor, why Adam Ku advertisement come out in ML channel? That's how ML make money ma, through advertising. Then usually finance YouTuber is always the same advertisement. I myself I have YouTube premium now. So I, I don't get to see the YouTube advertisement, but I I use Facebook. I see the, the picture, ah, it's always, always the eye quadrant, ah. it's always the, the, the sad fool, ah. I say, I say, I say, stop, uh, don't, stop buying shares, <laughs> don't, stop, don't buy shares, oh, uh, the, 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 the Seth guy, uh, the Sean guy, uh, I don't know, uh. then there's the Arikato investor, the Koi Lin, uh. Uh, then the Adam Koo Piwana Profit advertisement, uh, and Dowers, I uh, 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 use Facebook, I keep seeing all these uh, advertisement. Yeah, so uh, that, that's how content creators make money, lor. You through advertisement, lor. Yeah, so thanks for your support. Wow, special. What Marcus Song? Thanks for your Cai Peng, ah. Wow, F F Friday, ah. Five five five, ah. Five five five. Happy, happy. Five five five. Thank you, thank you. What la? What la? What la? Wow. Yeah, so special. Thanks again. Oh, to Raf. Wow, good Friday. Likes, ah. Likes, ah. Yeah, I like. Ah, uh, wow, a lot of likes, ah. Uh, so wow. Uh, oh, so one well, of this the Thai audience also interested. To invest in the China market, <laughs> master the audience international already. Go go until Thailand already. Master coming for to Thailand. Oh, go BKK for for holiday. Oh, eat the tom yum soup ah. Uh, the, the 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 prawn omelette lah. Uh, wow, that one. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's all my sharing for tonight. Lah. So hope you all enjoy your long weekend. So I, I might stream over the weekend lah, if I, I see anything interesting. Yeah, I think, but uh, I think it's more or less towards the end of the earning season already. So, so uh, soon, I think April will go back. It's the US earning season. Like the US banks, uh, Tesla, all this. Uh. So very fast. Uh. So, so this year, uh, I will still cover US stocks, uh, especially the, the, the Magnificent 7. Or the earning season, I will still cover a bit of US blue chip. My coverage for US will remain the same. Uh, but I don't plan to add too much US co coverage. Uh. My additional coverage will be more on the Hong Kong companies. Because Hong Kong really too cheap already. Crazy cheap, you know, the, the, the Hong Kong market, all these blue chip stocks. And all these, they have good track record, very long. Yeah, so, what lazy investor, you green dragon, ah, your, your green dragon think, think cute, eh, wow, break new high. Yeah, so, uh, those that, that don't know how to uh, get the the telegram, I also don't know how to do it, eh. yeah, I don't know how to help you there. Eh. So under my, my this video the the the, market, the, 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 the 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 description right you just click this description. So the first link is show you how to get the Baba bird. Or then the second link is a link to the community tab. Then in the community tab, you should be able to to see the link to the Telegram group already. Yeah. So see see you all and slowly chit chat with us in the Telegram group. Also have have a good and long weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, over the holiday and over the weekend, Alibaba shares do not drop. Also, happy, happy. Stock market oh, is green color. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, green color all the way. Then Monday, we see how. Also, take care. Oh, good night. Bye bye. Ding, 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 ding.